This video is for a chap on the UK Vintage Radio Forum who's just acquired one of the signal generators in front of you I do believe it's his first one and wants to know how to use it. This is an Advance E2 RF signal generator made by Advance down in Essex. These were made from the late 1940s through to the late 1970s I believe and didn't change pretty much the only things that changed were the knobs, the colour of the case and the logo here. There is an advanced E1 version which was obviously the first one and I think though there is, I do have one up in the loft, the uppermost range was only 80 megacycles. This one has a range from 100 kilocycles up to 100 megacycles. So let's have a look at the controls. Here we've got the on off switch and we've got a rotary control here which controls the output of the audio frequency plug here or connection. The voltage output here controls the strength of the signal from the attenuated RF jack here in conjunction with the attenuator it's called a multiplier here. So if you were measuring the sensitivity of a radio and I do realize you probably that's probably one step ahead of where you want to be you'd multiply the 7 here that it's on at the moment by these factors here and that would give you your microvolts and millivolts but needless to say at the moment these two controls just lower or increase the signal strength from the attenuated RF socket there. The full RF socket here, otherwise known as force, that's for when someone's twiddled the IF can cause so much that you can't get any form of signal through this and this will try and blast a signal or force a signal through the IF chain. It's very rarely used actually. Moving upwards here we've got your modulation controls now this this particular signal generator has internal modulation with a 400 Hertz tone where you can switch it off and just have the carrier wave and you can externally modulate the signal as well by sticking it up the AF socket here's your range switch which should be pretty obvious in conjunction with your range settings here and the dial control here Now I've let this warm up for about half an hour so it should be pretty stable but before we go on and look at what you need to do to connect it up to a radio set and use the signal generator on a radio let's have a look at some other signal generators because I think from reading various comments and um, you know, over the years on radio forums people who are new to the hobby have a little bit of confusion about what's a signal generator well there's loads of different signal generators of different sorts this one here is a Marconi signal generator this is an FM AM signal generator this one only does AM modulation now this is what you'd call a service grade instrument this one's a lab grade instrument and would have cost a lot of money the main difference being the care in the attenuators here you know when they were sorry the care in the design and manufacture of the attenuators we've got another signal generator here this is another service instrument with a lot more features this one is also an FM and AM signal generator covering the FM broadcast if you like and the AM broadcast bands this one's got various functions here and this one will also output an AF frequency of just one um, 400 Hertz tone either a sine wave or a square wave and it's got other this one's got a very handy 455 kilohertz IF and you can rock it higher or lower. So that's another service instrument. This one also has got sweep and markers on it. 
so in conjunction with an oscilloscope you can align the FM radio you probably will never see another one of those in the UK and then we have another form of signal generator up here now this is what's called a function generator and it's not so good for aligning radios and then we have here finally we have an audio frequency signal generator an entirely different beast as it says it's it's audio frequencies and this is used for testing hi-fi amplifiers and things so it's probably not much good for that nowadays but this is a 1970s bit of kit so let's go ahead and look at what you need to connect your advanced E2 up to a radio let's have a look at the connections between your signal generator and a radio this lead I made up myself and it consists of a Bellingly socket uh, plug sorry obviously these were they should be familiar to you they went in the back of every TV set made until recently and that obviously plugs in there at the other end of this lead there's two crop clips the black lead being your ground and the red lead being your signal connection and I've got a capacitor here in series with the red lead pretty much every signal generator manual will charge you with putting a DC blocking capacitor between the set you're connecting to and the attenuated RF output if you don't there's a chance that you might blow the um, attenuation resistors inside they don't like it up and You can make up one of those leads by just going down to Poundland or something and getting one of their TV leads. This one's two metres long and just cut one end off. Works perfectly fine. And in fact I use this one here in conjunction with this here. Now this is a dummy aerial built the design of the original dummy aerial that came with this the advanced TP1B it's a pretty simple circuit and that's available on the UK Vintage Radio Forum and in fact it could have been a fraction of this size maybe about that big these outputs are then connected to your radio using banana plugs and there's a capacitor inside here already that will block any DC and these are just some other examples of dummy aerials this one is for the AVO portable signal generator or the AVO number one signal generator and I can use it with this not a problem and here's is one for a Marconi signal generator not the one that I showed you earlier this one's a different one but a similar sort of thing to the advance unit right we're going to have a look at how to make a connection from the signal generator to your radio now this is a transistor radio obviously and it's got a ferrite aerial in it the connections to a valve radio are somewhat different um, as as I said this has got a ferrite area on it so it can already receive an RF signal so what we're doing here is we're loosely coupling with the lead I made up before connected into your attenuated RF socket and the radio is tuned to about 800 kilohertz so what we're going to do is we're going to switch the internal modulation on on the signal generator and we're going to sweep from 850 kilohertz back through 800 kilohertz and you should hear a tone come through 
and let's turn the volume up on the radio. Now that tells you that the dial setting here is 800 kilohertz. Each individual radio will have its own alignment procedure um, and what you're doing here um, if you were doing this procedure on your own radio is to set the dial up so the pointer is accurate to the dial scale. It's just called trimming. Let's have a listen again. And you can hear it'll peak and then it'll come back down can you hear there's a tone under it like a whistle that rises and then stops and that's dead on 800 or at least it's dead on the frequency of this radio simply put now let's try it with the internal modulation off and just the carrier wave and you'll hear a different sort of noise you'll hear a rushing noise and then it'll all go quiet there did you hear that sort of whistling noise descending down now you're dead on 800 kilohertz here, and if I switch the internal modulation on, it'll come blasting through. And you can reduce the internal modulation, obviously by turning your attenuation down. So that's a simple connection it's called loose coupling or so your signal generator output is loosely coupled to the radio it won't work on a valve radio without um, without a ferrite aerial inside so let's connect it up to a valve radio now and see what the difference is right here we've made connection to the signal input or the aerial input on the back of a valve radio I've just got the hot lead connected to the signal uh, to the radio at the moment, and I've got it set to medium wave. And we're going to tune through. There we go. Now the signal generator is set to about 750, so I'm going to put it up to 800 and we'll tune the radio to receive that. There we go, it's 800. And what you do, if I turn this set off now, what you do is you'd put um, an audio output meter across the coil of the speaker or even disconnect the speaker and put a load equivalent load of 8 ohms or 4 ohms and then you'd use something like this which is a Marconi output power meter and connect that up or um, something else is this um, Heathkit audio watt meter same thing or you could use an oscilloscope to um, set your peak so your peak output from your radio's um, output stage or a valve voltmeter or something or like something like that or if you're um, Signal generators are equipped with one of these. You could even use one of those meters, or you could use something like an AVO meter, something like that, to detect the peak. So when the needle is at its maximum, because your ear doesn't really isn't very good at detecting peaks. Right. So there's the 
advanced C2 signal generator. I don't want to really align anything. I've got nothing in here in my room at the moment that needs um, aligning. Um, I don't want to break any cores either. But um, if you want, I can show you how to align a radio. Um, I don't know, as I say, I've, I've actually got any that need um, alignment, actually. But um, if you've got any questions, please let me know or post, post um, a general question on the UK Radio Repair Forum. Thanks very much.